that are stopping you from tripling your income in 2021. And let me just tell you what the first one is, okay? The first one is gonna be your objection handling ability. Listen, I can't say this enough. And I know that you've heard me talk about this thousands of times. Your objection handling ability is the very first thing that I look at when I look to growing a three, four, five hundred thousand dollar a year earner. Okay. I'm going to get into the other four in a minute, but this is number one to me. As I'm sitting there talking to you right now and you're listening, and this is the Monday mentorship, we do it every single Monday and we go live with thousands of people across the country. Guess what, guys? This is an opportunity for you to step outside for a second of your management, of your family, of other salespeople, and really just look in the mirror at yourself and say, look, how great am I and, and where am I now and where do I want to go? And today, these five things, if you can nail these five things down, you will triple your income in 2021 guaranteed. Number one, objection handling ability. If I say no, can you get me to say yes? Yes or no? Do not lie to yourself. Look, I have thousands of objections that we use all the time, but there's a basic core of 60, 70, 100 that are going to come in all the time. You know, I need to talk to my wife. You know what I'm saying? Uh, I'm going to get back with you. We're not in the market right now. We're not buying anything today. It doesn't matter what the deal looks like. We're not ready to purchase yet. When these words come across your table and it's your customer, do you know how to turn that no into a yes and get them to say, hey, you know what, Andy? I appreciate the, you know explaining it that way. You know what? I think we will stay. Let's go ahead and see what the deal looks like. Or, hey, you know what? It's getting late. We're going to get back with you tomorrow. Thank you. We're out of here. We're rolling. You know what? We got another dealer we want to go see and check out before we make one final decision. Thank you so much. We appreciate everything you've done. Give us our keys. At that time, most salespeople, and this is a good time for you to look in the mirror, not lie to yourself and say, could I handle that? I mean, not go get my manager, not wing it, but do I know, do I have a strategy in a game plan how to specifically handle that? Guess what? If you don't, you are going to have so many missed opportunities in 2021 that it will be impossible for you to triple your income. You can't do it. And the reason why you can't do it is because you can't do your job at the highest level. Look, it's not your manager's job to save your deals. And by the way, it's your job to not practice on your customers, but to practice when you're not with your customers, okay? So let me explain to you what my day looks like as I want to become great at objection handling. Well, number one, and I, this isn't a pitch, I would go get the objection handling, okay? The objection handling, advanced objection handling course. If you don't have that course, you've lost your mind. Go get it. It's $299. You can wipe your butt with that. If I can teach you how to overcome any objection you get, word for word, the voice tonality, the body language and everything, go get it. How I do it is that I take the objection handling, okay? I take the objection and that whatever it is, it's Andy, I got to talk to my spouse. You know, I got to talk to my wife, my husband. I'm going to get back with you. Thank you so much. At that point in time, I need to have tattooed on my heart right here exactly what I want to say. And I need to be able to write that down. And I need to literally be able to say that same thing over and over. So if you walk up to me right now and you say, hey, Andy, you know what? I got a couple more cars to look at. I'm going to get back with you. I'm going to handle it the same way every time. I think, look, I've got five levels of how I handle this objection. The entry level is always right out the gate. I say, hey, I understand. I totally get it, right? We agree. Number one, number one, we agree. You always have to agree. If your objection handling doesn't start with the green, it's, it's junk. You'll do this with your customers and you'll be combative. 
So number one, we'll say, hey, I totally understand. I completely get it. Look, let me ask you a question, okay? Let's say you had already gone and seen all those other cars. You know all those other cars you want to go check out, right? You know all those pieces of paper you got in your hand, whatever it is, what you got up here you want to go see. Let's say you had already gone and seen all those other cars. I basically described the little situation to them. And I say, but look, let's say that this was the last car that you went and looked at right here. You saw those. This was the last one. Listen, let me ask you a question. Beautiful customers, my amazing people, right? After seeing all the cars, all those ones and this one, look, what would be the deciding factor in the end on actually which vehicle you'd actually end up buying? What would it be? Would it be the car itself regardless of the deal? Or do you think it'd be the great deal that the dealership's willing to give you? Which one? Which one would it be? Well, Andy, it'd probably be the great deal. Right. So it's not a matter of if you're going to buy something, it's when. And the when is when the deal's right. Am I right? We'll say, right. You say, cool. So if I could save you some time and money, would that offend you in any way? Would that upset you in any way at all, Mr. Customer? No? Thank goodness, guys. Follow me inside. Let's roll. Let's say they say, well, it would be the car, Andy. You know what, Andy? I think it might be the car. Okay, cool. So you're saying even if the car was $10,000 more than you wanted to pay, you'd still buy it? Well, no. So it would be the deal, right? And you notice my head, I'm doing this. They say, well, yeah, I guess maybe it might be the deal. And I say, cool. So it's not a matter of if you're going to buy, but when, and the when is when the deal's right, right? You see, I'm saying the same things every time. It's tattooed right here. Now watch this. If they say to me, hey, Andy, I appreciate it. Listen, we still want to go see these other cars though. Like, I mean, I'm telling you in the end, I guess it is the deal the dealers wanted to give us, but we still want to go see these other cars. What do you have lined up after that? I have a second objection handling tactic tattooed a third a fourth and a fifth all on i've got some more cars i want to go look at i've got another vehicle to see whatever it comes out with i am weaponized okay and i can teach you how to do it but you have to decide that your objection handling ability has got to be flawless i need you guys to do this number one you have to have the objection handling course. You have to, you have to, and you have to train on it every day for 30 minutes a day minimum. 30 minutes, that's all I ask. You have to handle that. Now, I'm gonna add this before we go to the next one. I'm gonna add this to it. Building and creating tough scenarios is extremely important for you to do. OK, so objection handling is like someone says no, you get them to say yes. But also creating tough scenarios is what we do in the master closer seminar. So in 2021, if you're really wanting to elevate and go like to this next level and you're wanting to be that alpha master closer, I would tell you, you guys need to be training with me on a virtual master closer seminar. I'm not, I'm not virtual, but a, a, a live master closer seminar here in the lion's den in Norman, Oklahoma. And that means this. Yeah, you get on an airplane or you drive and you come train with me. We do it once a month. But what I do is not only do I teach you how to overcome any objection, but I build tough scenarios. I say, hey, here's the deal, right? And I'm just gonna give you an example. You're working a deal, pencils exposed, right? Price trade payment. Customer says, you know what, Andy, give me a second. Let me talk to my wife for just a second. You walk away. He whispers to his wife, the wife whispers back to him. And then he says, come back over here. You walk over and the husband says, I appreciate it, Andy, but we're going to have to get back with you. The wife stands up, grabs her purse. What do you do in that spot? And I show you exactly how to close that deal 100% of the time. That's just a small example of a scenario building. And I build hundreds of these scenarios so that you could literally understand not only the concept of like, hey, when that happens, like this is what's happening and this is how I need to handle it. But also we give you the exact words, the exact words on how to handle it, which is crazy, okay? So number one on the five things that's costing you to triple your income in 2020, which I know you guys are gonna fix this, is gonna be ob your objection handling ability, okay? Number two, you doubt yourself. And by the way, guys, I'd be writing this down, okay? Number one would be your objection handling ability. That's going to cost you or cause you not to triple your income in 2021, 
Okay. We've got to work on that. Get the advanced overcoming objections course immediately. Okay. Number two, number two here, guys, you doubt yourself, write that down. You doubt yourself. You have low self limiting beliefs, write that down. Number one, right? Objection handling ability. Number two, doubt myself. Low self limiting beliefs, AKA I have a glass ceiling on my head. Okay. Look, I'm going to ask you this right now. Do you really think you can triple your income this year? So, I mean, I'm asking you, you hit 80,000 this year, you hit 180,000. Do you really believe? If you have one ounce of doubt in you, it will stop you from making that happen. You cannot doubt yourself ever again, ever again. And I'm going to tell you this, Terrence, just like you said, he said, yes, I do, right? I'm going to tell you this. You know inside of your heart, right, that you believe in yourself wholeheartedly. There's a glass ceiling. It's above all of us, okay? It's above all of us. It's above me, okay? It's right here. And guess what? You have to shatter it. You have to shatter that glass ceiling. You are putting low self-limiting beliefs on yourself, and you're not saying them out loud. No one else knows about them. But you know about them. And that's the problem. Because the way that you believe about yourself, right? Okay. Hey, right here, Bryce said, hey, made, a, made, made 60 G's last year. He goes, I'm going to make 150 this year. Bryce, objection handling through the freaking roof. Secondly, right? You have to believe in yourself. You have to realize this. You have to become a savage in here. Straight up. And I mean it, guys, when I say this. Okay. You have to believe in here, okay, that there's nothing that will get in your way. Nothing, okay? You will have some days that won't be good, but you're going to have more great days than you will bad days, okay? And that will be the difference between you and everyone else. Having a bad day is part of life, okay? It does, being successful and tripling your income doesn't mean that you won't have a bad day. What did you do on that tough day? That is where, when I don't have any low self-limiting beliefs, when I'm shattering my ceiling and I'm pushing through the year, right? Okay. When I'm doing all those things, what do I have to do? Well, I have to be able to handle, like Brandon said, adversity, difficulties, struggles. When I have a bad day, what do I do? Do I go talk to others about how I had a bad day or do I double down on my training that day? Look, that 30 minute conversation you had outside with somebody about why you're having a bad day and you can't believe you didn't close those three customers, you could have had that same 30 minute training in the conference room, training yourself, doubling down on your training, okay? And not having a stupid conversation with someone else that doesn't have the power or the authority to change anything with you. And actually the spoken word is huge. So when you're speaking to someone else in negativity or why can I do this or why can I do that? You're exposing weakness out of you. You cannot do that. Savages don't do that. One percenters don't have conversations with the other 99% of the world. Okay. You guys want to talk about why you had a tough day? Look, you call me. We'll have that conversation. But I'm going to ask one question when you do it. I'm going to say, look, did you double down on your training today? Yes or no? And if you say no, look, training doesn't always mean objection handling. It could mean mindset. Okay? I train on mindset every single day. I train on mindset. There's skill. Skill acquisition is so important to us. Okay? Acquiring new skill and sharpening the sword on the skill we already have. But the mind is so powerful. Your mind knows who you are. Your mind knows your big, dark secrets you're hiding. Your mind knows your insecurities. It knows it. And it will pull it out and use it against you all the time so that you can play it safe. 
listen, your mind doesn't want you to win. Only if it's easy does it want you to win. Your mind wants you to play it safe. It wants to protect you. It doesn't want you to advance and go on the front line and attack, okay? I tell my mind to shut up and get in the back seat, okay? Because guess what? I'm in charge, not you. And you guys have to do that. And you, it's so important. When life's going great and you're having an easy day and everything's great, this isn't a problem, okay? It's when you're having that bad day, okay? You wake up and the sun isn't shining, okay? You just lost your best customer, okay? You're fighting with your wife or your girlfriend, okay? It's, and you're dead broke. You don't have any money. It's on those days that you can't have low self-limiting beliefs. It's on those days that, you know, you can't get triggered, okay? And go backwards and play small, think small and have self-doubt, okay? So really important, five things that will stop you from tripling your income in 2021. One, objection handling ability. Two, self-doubt, AKA the glass ceiling, low self-limiting beliefs. Number three, okay, I wrote these down because I was thinking about this this morning as I hey, was Andy. pressing myself. Yo. And I just want to chime in there real quick on um, the self-doubt and dealing with problems. Um, I also like to point out that I think the problems get easier to deal with the more you deal with problems. Would mm -hmm. you agree with that yeah. statement? Hell yeah. Yeah, like, I mean, once you kind of progress and you level up yourself and you get more skilled and, you know, you you're, you get used to dealing with problems. A um, little example that I got a buddy, you know, him, he's a he's a multimillionaire and I'll talk to him and I'm like, how's everything going? He says, oh, it's great. And I was like, what's going on with business? And he's like, oh, I sold this entity to this guy and they uh, and I kept the rights to continue to sell the products and then they didn't pay me. So now. I have to sue them to get the rest of my money and they sold it to another company. So now I'm in a legal battle with them, whether I have the rights to still sell it. And he just, he spits this out in like 30 seconds. And I'm like, I don't even know if I follow how that tangled your problems are and what you're like in how many legal battles. And he's like, ah, it's no problem. We'll, we'll handle them. It's, we've been through stuff like this before. It's no big deal. And it's just like his level of calmness and these, these problems to me just sound like astronomical. But, you know, he's leveled up to the point and he's like, nah, it's nothing. You know, I'll fight this guy and I'll fight that guy. We'll win. And if we don't, we'll do this and this and this. And no problem. We'll, we'll get around it. You know, and it's just it kind of helps reset and see like, you know, he's just so yeah, good what, dealing with problems. And it's it's the same way. You know, if somebody has a in, in this business, you know, someone has a bad week or a bad month and they're like, well, now this happened or this dealership happened or this change happened or this GM happened. I mean, you're just so used to dealing with problems like those seem so little to you and so easy to solve with the right application. And yeah, yeah, it, it's fascinating. Used, I've seen some of that. Yeah, no, that makes complete sense. You know, what used to stress you out, those things shouldn't stress you out anymore. And, and number one is because you don't get emotional about things anymore because there's no need to getting emotional just causes your problem to magnify and get 10 times bigger. You know what I'm saying? Like getting emotional actually doesn't allow you to play at your best, you know, and, and I believe even we've had that in our business where sometimes we don't want something to happen and it happens and we get emotional and get mad. And guess what happens? That, 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 that energy that it takes when you get emotional, it takes away weeks of revenue and positivity um, when you could have just said, hey, you know what? Uh, we didn't want this to happen. Obviously, it happened. Uh, now we have to handle it and that's okay. You know what? That's the kind of leveling up that you get whenever you work on yourself daily, right? Absolutely. Yeah, that's a great point, man. And I'm glad that he said that because you know what? We're all going to run across difficulties. And I, I was glad that he brought that up because it's so true. Do not get emotional. Okay. It's our job to get our customers emotional. We can't get emotional. Okay. And I know that a lot of the times it is emotional because this is our life. But guess what? Getting emotional actually causes us to ruin our life, okay? And we make a lot of bad decisions when we're emotional. You should never make a decision uh, when you're emotional, okay? It'll 99% end up in a mistake. Um, I love it, man. I'm glad you brought that up. That's a great point. And like you said, the, the stronger you get, um, 
these things that used to stress you out don't stress you out anymore. It's not a problem. It's not a bother. Um, yeah, okay, absolutely. Talk, yeah, I love it. That's great. Um, let's talk about number three. Okay, number three. You set your goals too small. You think too small. This is a reason why you will not triple your income in 2021. Okay. Like literally when I say this, like you just set your goals too small. Inside what you want isn't big enough. And that's a giant problem. Okay. Some of you guys. Who are you, who's helping you set your goals? I don't know who it is, but it damn sure ain't me. Guys, my last year selling cars, I made 716,000. That was my year to date I finished with. The guy closest to me in the dealership finished with 120,000. You have to understand, had I been communicating with anyone else in the dealership about what my goals were, I would have been at 120,000 with that guy, okay? Look, if you hang around with nine broke people, you'll be the 10th, okay? If you truly want to become a one percenter, truly, Grant Cardone made his whole business, his entire business, okay, off of the 10X rule. <clears throat> Listen, let me explain this to you. Whether you like Grant Cardone, whether you don't, whether you love him, let me explain the concept of the 10X rule. Grant said that he realized when he was younger that he didn't set his targets high enough. And that was one of his biggest mistakes that he ever made in his life is not raising the targets high enough. He said that was his biggest mistake. He was hanging around with common people and when he would do common things or even uncommon things around common people, he seemed amazing. But once he got around uncommon people, that's where he realized he needed to be uncommon amongst uncommon people, which is David Goggins talks about a lot. And the goal is, is this, not raising your targets high enough could be the biggest mistake ever when you hit a target, you're supposed to feel amazed. I mean, like blown away, like totally the feeling that when you achieve something, it's supposed to just not, not, not that you go to sleep on a win, but you just like, oh, like, yes, gosh, that was so freaking hard. I hit that. When your manager say, how many are you going to sell this month? And, you know, you've sold 20 before and they're company record is 30, you don't dare to say, I'm going to sell 40 or 50. You know why? Because you're afraid that you'll be laughed at by other people. Well, because you pull your targets down, guess what? You don't give all that you have because it doesn't require all that you have. When you decide to finally set those standards this high, Tony Robbins, five-day seminars on raise your standards, those three words. And he teaches people to raise their damn standards. And you set that target up there at 40 cars. I don't care if you're the joker of the dealership and they laugh at you for three months. Guess what? You can and will hit it as long as you keep attacking. And guess what? Everybody says it can't happen until it does. And that's what we're going to make happen. Okay. So I want to tell you this thinking too small is going to stop you from my wife. <clears throat> we wanted to pay our house off. <clears throat> my wife, we bought a home. It was way more expensive than I wanted to buy. I, I did not want to buy this house. And she said, well, what if I guaranteed that we would pay it off fast and we would put everything we had towards it and we could pay this home off in two years. I said, well that, well, that changes everything. That'd be great. And she said, okay, done. That's what we're going to do. I'm going to go buy the house. And then you're going to raise your standards. Ah, I see what we're doing. And she says, you're going to go work 10 times harder. And you're going to go get what you're worth. Because I know what my husband's worth. And guess what happened? I did. 
And I needed her at that time because I was soft and because I had already felt like I was doing better than everybody else in my store, maybe even in the state, but not in the world or the country. <clears throat> she put those standards on me and she made me rise to this new level. Had she not put that on me, I would have not broke the records I did. And I want to tell you that I want to share that same thing that Grant Cardone runs his entire business off of, which is a simple 10x rule, 10x your actions, make 10 times the calls, be 10 times more positive than anyone else around you. You know what I'm saying? You know, have 10 times the energy, you know, think 10 times bigger. Bottom line is it goes with our apply of everything. Raise your standards and thinking small will cost you tripling your income in 2021. So with that being said, that is number three. Number one, objection handling. Number two, low self-limiting beliefs. And number three, uh, obviously, don't stop thinking small. Brandon, was you going to say something? Yeah, no, I love that when you were talking about um, setting goals so high that people think it's crazy and then you achieve them. It reminded me of an, um, an Einstein quote where he said, uh, the people who are crazy enough to think they can change the world are the ones that actually do. So when people Damn. are setting their, when I people are that. setting their goals to sell a hundred and, and you're like, let's sell 500. They're like, that's crazy. And then it's like, you hit those goals and people are like, how'd you do that? And it's like, why can't I do that? And it's like, well, you can't do that because you never even thought you could do it. And it wasn't even on your radar. So you'll never get there. Dude, I'm writing that down. The people that think they are crazy. Yeah. Enough to yeah. The, the people who are crazy enough to think that they can change the world are the ones that do. And that's by Albert Einstein. The ones that do. Dude, that's great. Hey, 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 we're crazy. This group's crazy. And that's what I love about all you guys. We're freaking crazy through the roof, man. I've had people try to get me to reason with them. I, I can't do it. I can't do it. I've lost friends. I've lost family members. I mean, I've lost, I've lost so many people in my life because I refuse to reason because I'm crazy and they can call you a fool, but you're a fool for your life and your future, your future. And I'm going to tell you this, when you make it, everybody will want to know how you did it. Everyone. How'd you do it, man? How'd you do it? They know exactly how you did it. You were crazy enough to believe that you could. And that's all it takes, man. And that almost ties back in, you know, to number two, which is that low self-limiting yes. belief. Yeah, that's amazing. Isn't it crazy how it all ties in, guys? And like I said, well, go ahead. Yeah, I was going to say on that one, um, when you said we, we're, we don't like to challenge ourselves, we like to be in the safe zone. I read an interesting um, article about how people evolved by uh, – you know, back in the plains, if you heard something rustling in the bushes, it could be a lion, it could be the wind. So you walk away and those are the people that lived and the people that ventured out, you know, they probably got eaten. So the scared mentality helped us evolve. But in today's society, I mean, that doesn't really apply anymore. So in terms of business, if you're scared and you hold back, you never achieve. But if you just go out and go for it, you know, like like uh, Timothy Ferris says, you know, sometimes the worst thing that can happen isn't near as bad as you think it is. It's like, I'm going to try it. this and I'm going to go all out. And the worst thing that happens is I fail and it doesn't work and I'll start over again. It's not life or death. You know, it's, you dude, know, it's life or death if, if you don't do it. Dude, you just nailed it. That's probably the best thing. He, he, Brandon said, it's not life or death if you fail. It's not life or death. Matter of fact. Those that are successful are those that have failed many times. The ones who are unsuccessful are the ones who never started to fail. They never even took enough action to know if they could make it or not. They already called it out that the, ch the chances of making it are so slim that they, they, they counted themselves out right out the gate, you know? But the crazy person says, hey, man, it's kind of like, you know, so, or what's that? Dumb and dumber, dumber. He's like, so you're saying there's a chance. You know, that's yeah. the way I am. <laughs> you know, I mean, dude, and, that, and, that's what, and that's what it's about, guys. I'm telling you, when I say this, the, the, the training that we put forth from, from everything from A to Z, from negotiations, closing, overcoming objections, word tracks, all that stuff, if you don't understand this stuff, 
this is what will stop you from ever even using that at a high level. Okay. You know, because you'll have that scarcity mentality. Listen, I want to give a shout out to a guy that I just got off the phone with. So there's a guy and he's a military guy. He's 25 years old. He went to the military three years, got out and he's working at a dealership in Austin, Texas. And anyways, the guy tells me, he says, Hey, Andy, um, I, I want, I want to make it and just tell me how, please. And I said, do you really want to know? I mean, like, are you just asking or you really want to know? He says, I really want to know. I said, done. You come train with me at a master closer seminar. You let me put my arms around you. You train live and in front of me. And that will be the day your life changes forever. I guarantee it. And guess what? The guy goes, how much is it? I said, 997. He said, I've been making $2,300 a month for two months. And everybody told me how profitable this business is. And he said, done, I'll put it on a credit card and I'll see you there January 17th. That guy is going to be a person that everyone in this business will know. I guarantee it. I was that guy 20 years ago. I put it on a credit card. I had no money and I went to my first seminar and I went from making nothing to $10,000 a month. And then I went to my next seminar and I made 20,000 a month. And that was how I changed everything. I'm telling you, I see these bet the farm risk takers. I watch them now and I watch them six months later. Yesterday, I did a Facebook uh, on, I did a, a Facebook live with Jana Gill. Jana Gill's 50 years old. She's a woman. And I'm just going to say this and I'll move on. And Jana says to me, she says, you, and she said there were some cuss words involved. I won't say what she said, but she says, you can't effing help this be uh, <laughs> like you can't. And she goes, I'm 50. I've been in this business my whole life. I'm burned out. I hate it. I am tired of it. I am sick of it. She says, you can't help me, Andy. I said, put it on a credit card. You're dead E zero broke. Right, right. Come train with me. Come train with me. She gets in her car. She puts it on a credit card. She tries to back out of it 20 times, trying to talk herself back out of it. She gets in her car, drives all the way here, 14 hours. She said she rebuilt her transmission when she left. And I'm, I'm just saying, this is what she said. Halfway here, the engine light starts flashing, which we all know that's bad on a car. It's not on. The engine light's not on. It's flashing. Okay. That means... Shit's about to blow up, okay? Guess what happened? She drives all the way here. She pulls up in front of the conference room. No lie. Her check engine light goes off. Ooh, that's kind of crazy. Didn't make this up. This is her story. She told it yesterday. She goes in. She trains with me all day long and another hundred other people from around the country. She completely recreated herself in that room completely recreated herself completely learned skill she's never known in her life but also she for, for the first time knew exactly who she wanted to be she got in her car went back home light never came on she goes back into her dealership she was a 10 car hand in her store she averages 25 cars a month now for the last six months she's the top saleswoman in her store she's got herself a new car She's happier than I've ever seen her. She works out daily. She never worked out before. But here's the coolest thing. She's making 15,000 a month, 20,000 a month. She's so happy. And now she understands. She just never, she don't, you don't know what you don't know. And you have to surround yourself with people that want to see you win and people that can teach you what you don't know and to take your level of skill from here to here. And guess what? That's what we do. And if you're a skeptic on yourself and you don't believe that this can happen, it won't. It 100% cannot happen. That's why the best thing that we believe in in our training program is just taking action. We believe that the people that take action are the ones that get the rewards, which means that you say, Andy, you know what? I don't believe in myself. I really don't. But I believe that you make people, right? go to levels they never imagined that they could get to when they join you. So for that reason, I'm there.
I'm in. And now I'm going to put all the pressure back on you. And guess what? Put it on me. I don't care about the skill you have. I care about the skill you go home with. And then guess what? We change thousands of people's lives every single month. It's just crazy. So my point is, number one, objection handling. Number two, low self-limiting beliefs, right? You know, AAK, crush the glass ceiling. Number three, you set your goals too small. And number four, this is huge. You don't know how to generate your own business. Man, guys, this is huge. You don't know. Hi, baby. You don't know how to generate your own business. This is number four. If you don't know how to generate your own business, you'll kill it. Sorry, my wife's looking at me right now. She's smoking hot. She's distracting me. She's over here. Uh, we're doing our Monday mentorship every Monday. Yeah. She's over here undressing on the other side of this deal. Good thing you guys can't see that. Um, anyways, I'm just kidding, babe. All right, listen. Um, anyways, go, where was I at? Now you got to start talking about undressing. Generate okay. your own um, business. Yeah, generate your own business. There we go. Generation, lead generation. Listen, you've got to understand how to generate your own business. If you don't, right, you will not triple your income. You can't. And by the way, if you want to know how to generate your own business, if you do, do me a favor shoot me a text message. I'm not going to go into this for a long time here. Okay. Shoot me a text message. Look, let me give you my number. It's 405. I've got, I've got a 918-210-0254. It's my business line, but let me give you my personal number. If you really want to know how to do it and like you're an action taker. Okay. I don't want to tell, I always say this. People say, Andy, how'd you make 700 grand a year selling cars? I say, do you really want to know? Or are you just asking? Shoot me a text message, 405-482-1991, okay? If I got your number already, that's great. If I don't, give me your name and say, Andy, help me with lead generation. I will tell you how to do it. You can, because there's some important things that I need to know. Where are you at? Like, what area of the country are you at? What store do you work in? How many pre-owned cars do you have in your inventory? What's your demographic, right, location look like? You know, it's like, how many people are there? And then guess what? Uh, how's the weather? Are you in a hot area? Are you in like Phoenix, Arizona? Or are you in Michigan? It's important for me to know these things so I can tell you how to market in your area, okay? We've got anywhere from Facebook ads to running social media to doing Craigslist to doing Facebook Marketplace. I will help you dial in a game plan and a plan for you, okay? where you're at in your area, okay? So I won't get into that um, all the way through, but I'm just gonna share something with you. The highest achievers in the country right now, the ones that are making more money than ever, yes, they'll take as many fresh ups as they can get. Yes, they'll take as many phone pops as they can get, but their cell phone goes off all day long, all day long, Phil, right there, my man. And that's my point is that look, if you're not learning how to generate your own business, you are missing a lot of income, okay? And also on top of that, you're not really able to design your own life because you're at the dealership's mercy for the rest of your life. One of the guys that I train out of California, he's on track to sell 1,400 cars this year, okay? 1,400 cars. Why don't you think about that? That's over 100 cars a month. But you know how he does it? In 2019, he sold 500 cars, okay? 2019, we took it, almost tripled his income and his sales in 2020. And how we did it was physically by creating a, we call it the Bermuda Triangle around his backyard that he owns, okay? In a hundred mile radius in all directions, he owns it. And I can help you do the same thing, but you have to be completely committed to doing it. It's extremely important, okay? And like I said, hey, uh, I saw Bryce Metcalf. He just said, hey, my dealership only sells X amount of cars. Remember this, Bryce. The dealership I went to when I was younger, I sold 70 cars a month at a dealership that only sold 70 cars a month when I started. When I first started there, okay, a sales guy was selling five, 10, 15 cars a month. That was max. Everybody made five grand, six grand a month. That was it. 
the dealership sold 70 cars a month on its own. Well, what I did is that I went there and generated my own business. And guess what? I ended up selling 70 cars a month in a store that was selling 70 and the dealership went to 200 because everyone else saw that I thought outside the box and I wasn't inside the box. I can teach you guys how to do that. So I don't care how many your store selling. That doesn't matter to me, okay? What I care about is this. Are you willing to commit and build your own business inside the business? That will triple your income in 2021, okay? Lead generation. Hey, and finish off with, go ahead, Brandon. Just to add in there. So once Andy sells that many cars, then the ownership and management start looking at him and saying, what are you doing? How are you doing this? And then that's a path right up to, higher management and running the store and making it do what it can really do. Cause sometimes those stores, they don't even know what they're capable of. No, that's it. And that's, that's kind of the thinking inside the box mentality that, you know, people always ask like, you know, what does the top guy look like here? How much money is someone making here? Guys, when I made 716 grand, my last year selling cars, when I went to work for this certain store, I didn't tell the GM I was going to sell 700 grand and income. Okay. That wasn't what happened. If I would have, look, his top guy was making a Hunsky. Okay. If I would have started at his job, if I would have went to get that job and, and, and I'm just telling you, they'd have hired me anyways, but imagine how stupid I would have sound. I'd have said, Hey, uh, so my goal is I want to come here and I want to earn 700,000 a year. He'd have said, uh, yeah, that ain't going to happen. Um, our top guy here that's been in the business for 20 years only earns a buck 20. Guess what? I'm not interested in having that conversation with that, with that owner. Don't talk about it. You know what I'm saying? Right? Be about it. Okay? So I'll teach you the game plan and then you just make it happen. And that's it. So with that being said, that'll be number four. And then by the way, you could work yourself up. I always say this. In our group, our goal is to become the baddest GMs in the world or the baddest salespeople in the country. One or the other. Okay? we're not going to be anywhere in the middle. I understand there's a middle way to the top when you go, but you know what you want to do and you attack. Okay. And like I said, we don't care about titles. Titles mean nothing. Okay. Call me the janitor. Just show me the money. All right. I don't care. Call me the janitor. Hey, well, janitor, Andy, I'm cool with that. Okay. As I'm making seven Hunskies on them. That's the idea with you guys is that we're not chasing titles. Okay. We're chasing becoming the most elite, baddest salespeople the world has ever seen. And that's what we're making. Okay. All right. Let's talk about number five. And this is a big one. And, you know, a lot of people don't like to hear this. Like, I mean it. Like, this will piss some people off. And I, I'm not afraid to tell you the truth because you need to hear it. Your entertainment budget is higher than your training budget. You know? I say, what's the most important thing to you in your life? You don't say watching Netflix. You don't say going to eat dinner. You don't say any of that stuff. You say things like my family and being successful. You know what? That's not how you spend your money. You don't spend your money on success. You spend your money on junk. You know what? This is one of the biggest problems that I see with people that want to be really successful. They have a scarcity mindset with their money. Let me explain this to you just so you can really understand this. Take a pen right now, take a pen and take a piece of paper. And I want you to write down right now how much money you spent on yourself training in 2021 or 2020. How much money did you? Go ahead. Do it. Was it 200? Was it 2,000? Was it 20,000? What did you spend? Now, go back to your goals when we were talking at number three, that you set your goals too small. Go to your goal for a minute. What is your 2021 earning income goal? The potential earning income goal that you're going to attack, what is it? 250,000? 500,000? 100,000? I don't care. Look at that number. How much money are you willing to invest in yourself in training? 
to guarantee and ensure that you have the skills and the knowledge and you're surrounding yourself. Show me your trainer. I'll show you your future. That can, that can get you to that. Think about it. And if you're looking to, to make $300,000 in 2021 and you're wanting to do it on a $200 training budget, it's never going to happen. It can't happen. You have to be willing, okay, to invest in yourself. Last year, last year alone, I spent $70,000 in training on myself. And every time I did, it would piss me off. And I like getting pissed off because I get, I take action when I'm pissed off. And everything that I pay for in life, I pay attention to. And when I spend my money, my money holds me accountable. And I'm not scared of spending money because money is just a tool. Even when I have no money, everybody's money is somebody else's money, which means the money that you have right now, is, it was someone else's money and it's your money. And now you're going to give it to someone else. And the goal is how do you leverage your money to make you more money? Well, the goal is, is that if you choose me to be your trainer and me and you are training together, here's what I would tell you. 2021, you need to be training at a live master closer seminar. It's, it's crucial that you make sure that happens. Do you want to do it at the beginning of the year? So you have all year to put it into play? Or do you want to try to do it at the end of the year? Bottom line is, you need to decide if 2021 is a year that you don't want to let pass you by and kill it, you need to do it now. Also, I told you guys objection handling is huge. If you don't have the objection handling course, look, if you're new in the business, you need the zero to 100K immediately. And then number two, you need the objection handling course immediately. And number three, you need the elite negotiating course, which teaches you how to hold profit on the pencil. And besides that, I'm a person that I'm a visual person. I like to see things with my eyes. That's why the live training program works so well is because that's what changes everything when I can see it. If you tell me that you can close anybody, anytime, any place, anywhere, overcome any objection. I want to see that with my eyes. I want to physically have you in front of me and I want to try you on. And when you can show me that that's possible, then I believe that I can do that. And guess what? That's what this, this, this company, that's what I do with salespeople is that I teach you guys how to become better than me. I'm not the trainer that does some slideshow bull crap right? That wants you to watch. I am a trainer that has paid the rent, that broke the records, hit the numbers. And I'm, and I'm better at teaching you how to do it than I was even on doing it on my own. Making 2 million as a GM, guess what? I want to teach you to make more than that. And I will share this with you. Anybody that is committed, that stays next to me, that training budget is higher than their entertainment budget, these people, entrepreneurship works like this. You live the next few years of your life like no one else. So you can live the rest of your life like no one else can. You guys have to decide, will you sacrifice and pay the rent now? Or will you hope something happens and regret it later? You can take a left and have a good life or a right and have a great life. What's up, Brandon? Oh, I, I had a great answer.